And away we go. Hello, winners. How is everyone doing, my winning friends? I'm going to turn the radio a little bit. Okay. Well, let me come over here and turn this off. Okie dokie. So, I hope everyone had a good day today. Today, and welcome, my friends. <laughs> oh my gosh. Welcome to Win with Attraction Marketing for AIGPT Empowered Entrepreneurs. Oh yes, that's right. Yeah. So, um, I'm here again, and I want to talk about a few things. Um, I guess I'm kind of done talking about Juneteenth. And don't even talk to me about it, okay? But you know what? People get scared when black people say, Don't say that to me! Like, I don't like the term African American. Can someone show me uh, the country of African America? Or Africa America? Where is the place? I really like to go there and see what it's like. This Africa, African American. Uh, African America. Where is that? How do I get a passport? Can I apply for a passport? Do they have their own flag? You know what I'm saying here? Did we ever leave the Jim Crow age? Did we? Thanks to the Democrats. But see, I'm not going to get into that. Okay. Uh-oh, I have a slow connection, and I wonder if my, uh, if my, um, battery is going, uh, this phone, uh, it's a new phone, fairly new, and it's just, ugh, can't hold a charge, can't do anything, but, um, anyway, so, I wanted to talk a little bit about... Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi, I believe it's Graziosi, are having a three-day event, which is free. And I tell you, Tony Robbins gets you so revved up and motivated again because today I just woke up and I said, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to call anybody today. I am... This is a glare. Let me get rid of that. Um, I'm feeling, you know, a little burnt out from, and but you know, I'm learning more and more and more is that you don't get, you just can't connect with your prospects. It's got to be, um, you know, uh, it, it, it's got to be solely business and if you're going to be friends be friends with someone who you know you're not going to be who's not going to be a client of yours um yeah because I got kind of because uh, I felt like I had such a good rapport with all these people and now I can't find them but I'm just gonna I said I'm gonna take a day off and then tomorrow I'll call them all and if they want to engage, they'll engage. If they don't, they don't. But with the business I'm in is we are not for everybody. We don't want everybody. We're an exclusive type of people. And we are actually people who can afford uh, high ticket uh, life coaching and destination events. So we're looking for people who can afford to fly to Australia or to, I don't know, Switzerland or to Bangkok or something. And doesn't really, is not really a big, huge deal. And so, you know, you talk to all these people. And if you're prospecting on a job board, likely 
you're going to come into contact with people who are looking for salary positions. And as I said, the jobs are going. And I don't know what they're going to do when the jobs are gone because the jobs say bye-bye because American jobs are going overseas and they're going AI and they're going to be automated because the automation, um, you know, uh, what do I want to say? Uh, the functionalities, that's not really the word, but the, you know, the um, potential for automate is just off, off the charts. And with automation, AI, AI is the least of our worries, but with automation, with jobs going to the Philippines and Mexico, they, the, the, Employers, they don't care because they're going to say if we can get by with three customer service agents as opposed to ten, they're going to lay off seven. And they're, they don't care where you go. They don't care how you're going to pay your bills. They don't care. And you have to find other ways of earning money. So you can go and become an internet model or do your videos on these kinky sites or whatever, but you're going to have to come up with something. Because the jobs, they're gone. Okay? And so what I was going to say is, you know, I work in an area, in an um, industry that's really reserved for people who can afford high ticket items. Because when people say to me, oh, I'd love to join you in, in this business, but I don't have the money. And it's like, it's 20, it's about $2,300 to take the courses and then you have to, you know, run your um, monthly operating costs. And it's a fraction of what I paid when I had my talent agency and I had to have a physical office for SAG-AFTRA. You had to have a physical office. And you had, I had to pay um, licensing fees, like business license in Oregon and then in California and then I had to pay for a talent agency license in California which was two hundred and fifty dollars a year in Oregon it was just it's a hundred and then you have to be bonded that's like six thousand dollars a year just to be bonded and you know the office how much is that I hired my niece for a while to do to be my um, receptionist that cost you then you have to pay for the breakdowns and then the actors trying to get them to pay you 10 percent they think that giving you ten dollars if they make a hundred dollars is the end of the world one guy said can i pay you five percent i said keep the money keep it if you can't pay what we're supposed to make just forget it. So that's the deal. And so, you know, you need to be able to run your business. And people are used to, we come from a society where people, it's kind of a slavery-based um, model where someone else pays for your hours and they give you benefits and da 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 da, da. And so we're not taught how to run businesses on our own. So it's very difficult to find people like that and understand that your return, you get a return on your investment. You see what I'm saying? So if you're going to pay the 23, and that's the entry level, like there are, um, uh, other tiers that cost $28,000 and people, they sign up for it because they can afford it and uh, they can, they, they don't, they want to travel. They, they'll go and travel to Australia or New Zealand or 
Spain or South Africa or whatever. And uh, so, and you know, the people say, so if you really want something, you'll find a way. If you want Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton, this is a nice belt I have, Louis Vuitton, I never wear it. If you want a Rolex, you will find a way. And don't think this is just an empty box, okay? It's in here, and it's all wrapped up. And so, I only got one hand, so I can't do that. If you, see if I could go with this. Ugh. If you want Chanel, you will find a way to get Chanel. This is for my Chanel collection. I have this big Chanel collection. I've got all this Chanel stuff. I, I have, oh, I got stuff. I got purses. I got some shoes. I got perfume. I got this really nice belt buckle kind of dilly thingy and uh, stuff like that. So you could make a way for it. And so the you know, uh, the challenge is just finding the, the prospects who are in this particular league, I guess you could call it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you can't be down to earth. I'm down to earth. Like you can see, I'm here in my kitchen, nothing spectacular, but you also have to step it up sometimes too and hang out in the right circles right so that's what you gotta do so you guys i had told you i was going to tell you a cute story tonight i don't know if i can really go into it too much but it, it i'm just gonna touch on it okay because i want to wrap this up too is I was doing research for my AI influencer, who is a Korean uh, male, well, he's a Korean version of a male geisha, which is kind of a made-up thing. <laughs> there, there really aren't any male, I don't think there are male geishas, uh, Japanese or Korean or Chinese or any, maybe Thai, maybe Thai. But with the lady boys and all that. But um, anyway, I was doing some research. And so I looked up Japanese massage. And so they have this thing called Japanese oil massage. And so I'm clicking around. And I click on this thing. And it's like totally X-rated. And I said, you know, I don't really watch this stuff. Well, I'm a... I'm gonna click on. <laughs> I'm gonna click on this and see what's up, man. And so it was a male masseuse in Japan. And so in this one, okay, the one I was watching, this lady goes to the guy, and he they're like sitting in a room, like like in kind of a lounge in his office, you know, like a like the waiting room or, you know, the um, entrance. And so he's asking her questions. This is all in Japanese, so I, I can only go by what it seemed, the gist. But it seemed like he was asking her questions, and she was like going, yeah, you know, my job is kind of, uh, you know, stressing me out. And it seems like my husband and I don't get along like we used to. And... My kids never talk to me. I, you know, I had that kind of a vibe from her. And he was like, okay, every, yeah, fine, that sounds, I, you know, okay. And so he goes in another room, and he comes back, and he says, okay, well, I think I have your treatment plan ready. And so um, he goes, you can go in the room and, and put on, you know, a, your robe and, you know, whatever they wear and stuff. And so he, she goes in there and then she goes into the massage room. And so he comes back. I think it was him. Comes back in the room. 
And yeah, I think yeah, it was him. It was him. He comes back and so he she's laying down there and he starts massaging her like her head, you know, like this and it was like they have those you know how in Asia they really get into the massage things you know they have like aromatherapy and they're they'll put on something on your neck and and he started with that well he gets he's like you know working on her back and everything, you know, takes off the robe and has like a towel across, you know, all good. And he just starts massaging her. Next thing you know, he's massaging her boobs and stuff and in a very suggestive way. And then he works his way down and he's doing all the massaging, and then she's starting to get a little worked up. But she doesn't say nothing. And he just keeps massaging her. And then, he's taking out all kind of devices and apparati. And, and then he's working himself and then he gets a little <laughs> lip action and at the end of the thing <clears throat> and I said these male masseuse these male masseurs in Asia I said is that even legal yeah, and I said, so the next time I go to, no, 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 but the next time I go to Japan, I'm just going to see if they really exist, but I, I'm sure they do because I saw like three separate videos. One was the woman went to, and it was these women, an older woman who seemed like she was the main owner. And then she takes the girl back and massaging her and putting creams and stuff and massage, giving her a head massage and everything. And then this guy, masseuse, comes in. And the lady, like, undresses the girl and she's massaging one part and the male masseur is massaging the other part. And then... All oh, heck goes on with him. And then she came in with her husband or her boyfriend. And he's sitting in the lobby. And there's like a window. And he's watching the whole thing. And then the male masseuse. You know what I'm saying? And the boyfriend, he's just kind of going, oh my God. He's just kind of, oh man. And here's the thing. Ah, in Asia, you better watch it. Because those people will put a camera. And I don't think in Asia it's illegal to put a camera. Because they had cameras in the dressing room. They had cameras in the lobby. And then they had camera in the massage room and then they put that online and I'm sure it was one of these paid things and so but they the male they got male masseurs you girls male masseurs in Asia they're not just for the guys and I'm talking about you want to talk about a happy ending? That was an ending for ages. <laughs> for generations to come. Oh, Lordy B. Lordy B. So, my, my male Korean geisha guy, he, he talks about it. You know, that's one of the things he was trained to do. But I'm like, I mean, you know, to build the story. 
and so, because he lives at the house of the silken flower with the duchess who took him in because when he was a teenager his parents got both got amnesia like double amnesia and they didn't know who he was and so they made him leave because they didn't they didn't feel comfortable taking care of a stranger so he ended up just on the street when he was just a street kid and he he had his skateboard and that's his deal he loves to skate and so that's why I put a lot of skateboard pictures and stuff like that up and then he meets the Duchess and so the Duchess was so kind to take him in and then that's how he became the Mel Geisha guy isn't that fun and then I have more I have people from all backgrounds so don't think I'm just doing Asians and I, I got a girl, she's going to be from Angola in Africa. And she's going to be modeled after this one girl I knew who was from Angola, who was just so pretty. But her teeth were completely, they worse than mine. And you know the reason my teeth are so bad is because I, I stopped wearing my retainer and I decided I'm going to start wearing the retainer. It's going to be two days of pure pain. But if you look at my Facebook cover photo and you see my smile, I was wearing my retainer. And that's why my teeth look a lot better. And so I'm just being lazy. When I go back to Vietnam, I have a dentist there. And he's going to fix me up. Let me tell you, okay? So you guys, thanks so much. I I didn't get as much in as you know I planned, but just give me till next week, you guys, because I gotta find that dry erase pen so I could put some lessons, proper lessons together. Because I do want to talk about Jeremy Miles. No, Jeremy Minor and the new way to handle cells okay alrighty well thank you so much for joining me keep winning my winning beautiful friends from all around the world see ya on free styling Friday ciao God bless you.